Sometimes when we write C sharp, there can be a lot of data inside our code. And in some cases, it might be easier to create an array instead of creating a bunch of different variables that are going to have different data inside of them. So just to talk about variables, we're gonna do that in this short episode here. As you can see in front of me, I have a different example than I did in the previous episode. In this video, we just simply have the main program.cs file and inside the, the main method, we have four different variables that are equal to a string data type. Now, because all this data here sort of belong together, I can put them all inside one array that doesn't look as messy as what we have right here. So as you can see, instead of creating all these different variables under each other, you can quickly see that if we were to have, let's say 50 variables, it's gonna get quite messy inside the code. So instead we can create what is called an array. Now, if you come from a different programming background, you might notice that when we're about to create an array, that it looks a little bit different than other programming languages, such as PHP or JavaScript, because when it comes to C Sharp, when we create an array, we need to make sure we only use one specific data type inside the arrays. And we also need to know beforehand how many pieces of data that is going to go inside our arrays. So if I were to go inside the code here, and create an array that is going to have the same data inside of it as we have above here, what we need to do to start with is first of all, define what kind of data type are we going to use inside this array? Because remember, we can only use one type of data. So in this case here, we're working with strings. So I'm just simply gonna create a string array. So we're gonna say we have a string and then we need to put brackets right after to say this is a array we're about to create here. Then we need to define some kind of name for this array. We could call this one names just to give it something. And then what we need to do is we need to actually create memory or allocate memory for this array, just like we want to do if we were to create an object inside C sharp. And we do that in the same way as if we were to create an object inside C sharp. So we're going to use the new keyword. Then we're going to say what kind of data is this going to be? This is going to be a string array. And then we're going to determine inside a pair of brackets what exactly the number of data is going to be inside this array. If I did call this one curly brackets before, I do apologize, that is called a bracket, just to sort of fix myself if I called it that. So inside the brackets here, right now I can actually tell we have four pieces of data that I need to insert inside this array. So I'm going to write four inside the brackets here. Now we can, if we already know what is going to go inside the array, to begin with, we can actually assign data directly on this one line here. So afterwards, what I can do is I can actually go and use curly brackets. And this time I did actually say correctly. And inside the curly brackets here, what we can do is we can actually go ahead and create the different strings that are going to be inserted inside the array. So I can say the first one's going to be Daniel. Then we're going to separate them with a comma. The next one is going to be John. Then we're gonna separate them with a comma. The next one is going to be Jane. Then the last one is going to be Toby. There we go. So this is how we would actually create an array with these data inside of it. Now, if I don't know how or what kind of data I'm going to put inside the array, I can just go ahead and delete what I have here and show you how we're gonna insert the data afterwards. So what we can do is we can actually assign data later on in our code if we don't know what is going to be inserted as data into the array when we do actually create it. And the way we do that is by referring to the array, which is in this case is called names. And then we need to refer to the index or the place inside the array, because you need to think about the array as a container that has uh, spaces that you need to sort of fill in inside the array. And because we have four spaces inside this array here, because we created four different um, indexes, we call it, we can actually go ahead and assign each piece of data to one of these indexes. Now indexes inside the array just simply mean what place inside the array we're going to fill in. And when it comes to indexes or places inside arrays, we always start counting from zero. And that is something that is very important to note. Anytime we do anything with code, we usually start at zero. So the first spot inside the array is not gonna be spot number one, it is going to be spot number zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we have names and the zero index inside the names array. And I want to set that equal to a string data, which is going to be Daniel in this case here. Then afterwards, we can go and fill in uh, names one and then names two and names three, not names four because zero counts as one of the places. Uh, if you want to duplicate a line, just simply write control D 
control D if that was hard for my from my accent to understand. Um, and then you can just sort of copy the line here and then create a new index. There we go. And then fill in different data. Then in this example here, if we were to fill them all in, like so, and actually run, let's say name number one, well, in this case, not name number one, but in this case, we might run name number zero index. There we go. And then run the console. Then you can see if we were to pull it over that we get Daniel inside uh, the console. If we were to refer to names with index as two, then we should be getting Jane inside the console. And again, I have to pull it over. I don't know why I need to do that. And there we get Jane. Now creating a race like this is a great way to do it if you want to sort of collect data in one place instead of having them all spread out or have them separated in different variables in your code. So a race is something that we will be using quite often inside our applications. Now for now, we're not gonna focus too much on the fact that we have arrays, you know, instead of variables because you're still new at learning C Sharp and if you haven't learned something like, I don't know, PHP or JavaScript before, then creating arrays might be a new concept for you which in that case, you shouldn't be too worried about arrays because we will get familiar with them as you start coding inside C Sharp here. So it will sink in at some point. So don't worry too much about it. But that is what I wanted to teach you today when it comes to arrays. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.